Hi guys, so you have your UCAS applications looming at the end, back end of this year and you want to make an outstanding personal statement that makes you stand out from the crowds and as anybody who has ever tried to make a personal statement, it is a lot harder than it sounds and 500 words goes quickly. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to make a brilliant personal statement that hopefully will get you into your university of your dreams. Now there's loads of way that you can use this social isolation time. You can try to become incredible at crying baby impressions. You can create your own alternative lederhosen music. And don't get me wrong, both of those things are totally legitimate things that you can be doing right now, but I would say a better way of using your time right now is to work towards your future and start to build your personal statement. Now this may seem earlier than you might have been expecting, but this is the perfect opportunity because you have headspace and you have time to make it really good. And particularly now, your personal statements are likely to become even more important than usual for getting into universities because of extra competition from deferred entries to university and grades being a little bit more uncertain than usual. And also speaking from experience, writing a personal statement always takes way longer than you expect. So leaving it to the last minute like I actually did is a terrible idea, so start cracking now. Now I'm gonna break down this personal statement tutorial into two separate parts. Part one is gonna be this one, which is building the skills and character you need for your personal statement, the stuff behind the looking glass. Because of course with social isolation, extracurricular activities are harder to come by now, so I've got a few ideas that you can use during this time. And then in part two, I'm gonna be talking about the craft of actually writing that personal statement itself to allow you to sell yourself to the universities in the most exciting, most concise way possible. If you wanna be notified when part two comes out, hit that subscribe button. Okay, so why have I broken up this tutorial into two separate parts? Because essentially, I think both parts are equally as important as each other. However, I do think that lots of students go straight to the second part, part two, of just writing the personal statement a little bit too early. I think there needs to be a bit of a step back and a bit of a self-reflection and a bit of preparation before you actually start putting pen to paper. Let me put it this way, if I tried to sell you this pen, this could be the best looking pen in the world, it just so happens it's not the best looking pen in the world, it's a biro. But if you can see that this pen doesn't have any ink in it or not very much ink, are you likely to buy it? Now in the same way you could have the most beautifully crafted personal statement in the entire world, but if you don't have substance behind it, if you don't have ink within your pen, then the people reading it in your university are gonna see straight through it then it's not gonna stand out to the people reading it at your university, the people that you want to impress. Now to extend this analogy a little bit further, what is your ink? Well, your ink is the things that your university are looking for, the qualities, the skills, the character that they're looking for in their courses. These are gonna be things like work ethic. These are gonna be things like self-discipline, organization, enthusiasm or passion for your subject, teamwork, leadership, these are the substance, these are the character traits that universities pretty much universally are gonna be looking for when they're gonna choose you on their course. So in summary, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to fill your pen up with ink before you try to sell it. Okay, personal statement building advice number one is to read around your subject. Now I'd say this is probably the most important one because of course the people who are gonna allow you onto their course want to see a passion and a drive for your subject. Now I go into much more detail of how to do this in a video I did last week for year 13s. If you want more detail on this, have a look there. But essentially the social isolation time is a really good chance for you to start to cultivate a genuine enthusiasm, if not passion, for the subject that you're gonna do. Now sometimes at school it can feel a little bit constricted and you're doing so much of a subject and you're being told which bits of that subject to do and it can mean that you lose that enthusiasm and you lose that passion. Now you have the opportunity to learn by yourself and start to hone in on the bits that you do find really interesting. 
Now, there's a whole wide range of information out there on your subject. It can be a little daunting of where to start. So this is what I would do to give myself some kind of direction of where I should be reading up on things or learning things. Step one, I'd go to some of the universities that you're looking at, go on the course that you're gonna to apply to, and then they're gonna give you a list of modules that you're covering, and they might even give you a reading list as well. This will be a good kind of outline of areas that would be useful for you to start looking into. Step number two, choose one, two or three of the areas that you think are really interesting from that course list and then start to find interesting content on the internet about that subject. Now, what do I mean by interesting content? Now, for me personally, I start looking for engaging speakers on it. So for instance, if I was gonna apply to physics at university, I could watch Neil deGrasse Tyson for years and years, and he's got millions of YouTube videos where he's incredibly passionately talking about his subject. If I was doing history, I'd go to the Crash Course YouTube page and look at all of their content. And there's gonna be some really engaging speakers either on YouTube or via podcasts or Instagram or whatever it is, specialize in making the ocean of their particular subject into the most engaging and relatable format possible. So that's what I do for step two. And step three, after listening to a few of those engaging speakers, I choose a few more areas that they've spoken about and then dig deeper. And that can be through a variety of things. That can be through reading books, that can be through doing Udemy courses, that can be looking at podcasts by other people, that can be looking at you know research papers online. And what this will do is start to cultivate a genuine knowledge and a genuine enthusiasm for areas of the subject that your universities will want to see coming across in your personal statement. And you know what, if you wanted to take that one step further and really stand out, what you should do is take that new knowledge you've learned and create your own content with it. I'm talking making a blog, I'm talking making a podcast with a mate, I'm talking YouTube channel or videos. Taking the content you've learned and applying it and talking about it in your own way is an amazing way to show that you're an independent learner. And also, who else is doing that? You're gonna massively stand out. And that leads us on to step number two, which is start to build your character with extracurricular activities. Now we have obviously loads more time than usual because of the social isolation. You might be getting a bit bored sometime. Now what, one thing that would be really good to talk about in your personal statement is how you've used this social isolation time to progress yourself or to help society. In other words, usually called extracurricular activities. Of course, there's less formal situations happening at the moment with that. There's no Duke of Edinburgh. There's no work experience schemes at the moment. But there's still plenty of opportunity to do things if you're willing to get a little bit more creative. So I had a little bit of research and I found just a couple of ideas that will help you get started on your journey. Okay, number one is volunteering. Now, uh, these are harder to come by now for sure. As I'm sure you're aware, loads of big institutions that usually would be great for your personal statements have now closed their doors for this year. So people like Duke of Edinburgh, uh, companies offering work experiences, other volunteer programs are no longer running. But that doesn't mean that you can't do some volunteering in this environment. You just have to get a little bit more creative. So I'm gonna give you one case in point just to illustrate. This 17 year old student named, let me get this right, Josh St. John James, 17 years old from Kingston in London, and he wrote to his MP to start a volunteer group for young people. And they're essentially out there helping the community in any way they can. But by starting this initiative and getting other people involved in it and helping the community, he's showing a lot of skills that universities are looking for, like leadership, like teamwork, like being a self-starter. So this guy is gonna have something incredible to write on his personal statement when it comes round. Something that's gonna make him truly stand out because who else is doing that? There's no reason why you can't get creative and start your own volunteering scheme as well. One way to start brainstorming what that might look like would be to think about the problems that are facing society right now, basic things. Maybe you could pick up people shopping. Maybe you could find a way to get in contact with local elderly people and have a conversation with them. Maybe you could start a Zoom group with your friends and spread it to the community of some kind of fitness regime for everybody. I don't know, meditation. 
something that'll help the well-being of the community. I'm literally just talking out loud here, but have a think about what you could offer your community and how you could make it into an initiative that will help people. If you don't wanna start anything, there's probably things going on already in your local community. One place that's really good to start looking is just a Facebook group or just type Google in your local area and forum and then I'm sure there's lots of people talking about opportunities going on in your area. And social isolation extracurricular activity two would be just to build a skill to a really good level during this time. Because again, lots of people aren't gonna be using this time that effectively. My version of that is becoming fluent in Spanish in three months, but your version of that can be whatever you want it to be. It can be becoming grade eight at the guitar. It can be writing a novel. If you really invested time in developing these skills, it shows, again, a lot of the qualities universities are looking for. It shows enthusiasm, it shows work ethic, it shows self-discipline and number three way to fill up your personal statement pen with ink is to just sit down and reflect now this again I think is something that isn't done enough before students go straight into writing the personal statement itself actually just sit down with yourself for a bit and reflect why it is that you want to go to this university course ask yourself questions like why do you want to do this course why is the subject of interest to you who do you want to be when you're older? What do you want to be when you're older? Think questions like this. You don't need to have exact answers for them, but having some kind of narrative or story there is gonna help you come across a lot more authentically and enthusiastically in your personal statement compared to someone who doesn't really know what they want or haven't really given it a huge amount of thought. And point number four is, Try not to treat this as a tick boxing exercise just for writing your personal statement. Now, what this should really be, and this is something that I got wrong when doing my personal statement when I was 17, um, I went into it thinking, what can I do to impress the universities? What I think you should do instead is step back and genuinely see it as a way that you can build your character or skill set and become the type of person that you would like to be. Um, with that kind of attitude, that is what's going to impress universities. But if you're just doing it to tick a box that you think needs to be ticked, you're not really gonna develop those traits and skills and ambitions that the university want to see. And if you're a box ticker, it does come across in your personal statement when you put pen to paper. Okay, so those are some ideas for building your skills and character for your personal statement before you even start writing it. As I mentioned before, next week, Thursday, I'm gonna be talking through how to actually write your personal statement. So taking those building blocks we've been talking about, or the ink, and then putting it on the page in the most engaging, concise, and impactful way possible so you stand out from the crowd I hope everyone out there is ha staying happy and safe during this time and I will see you next time.